lifestyle. Lifestyle is simply how you choose to live, how you design your life. It's key to understand, some people have learned to earn well, but they haven't learned to live well. The man studied economics, but he didn't study lifestyle. Or he's got the money now, but he doesn't have the joy. Here's what lifestyle is. Figuring ways to live uniquely. And it's a study, it's a practice, it's an art. It's as much of a skill as economics. Learning to live well. Finding ways to bring joy, pleasure, excitement, appreciation, and awareness of how unique life can be. It's a study, it's a practice doesn't come by accident. Happiness is not an accident, it's an art. Lifestyle is not an amount. Culture is not an amount. Sophistication is not an account. Sophistication is a practice. It's an art. And anybody who wishes can engage in the art of sophistication. Learning by words and phrases and sentences to communicate with other people. Here's where part of the fortune lies, the use of language. There's magic in good communication. There's magic in the human touch of words. It was said the pen is mightier than the sword. That's true. Words are powerful. Words are almost godlike. I'm an amateur on some of these studies, but an ancient verse says, God was the word, and the word was God. Wow, powerful language to illustrate how powerful the word is. Words can be life-changing. Words can give light. Words can formulate ideology, democracy, and freedom, capitalism, and all the things we enjoy in this unique country. We have to find ways to give words to that so that it can be understood. Words form the pictures of our mind. Words help to translate an interchange of thought and ideas between human beings. So one of the most important skills is the skill of good communication. Learning words, phrases, sentences, whether it's written or spoken. Language is so powerful in affecting our lives and using those skills to affect other people's lives. So let's talk about communications and how powerful it is and how important it is. I've got four steps to achieve good communication. Let me give you this. Let's dive right into it. And I'm sure if you were to just ponder for a while, you'd probably come up with these same four steps. I'm not covering anything new, right? These are just basic Fundamental. But here's where it all starts. Fundamental. Somebody once said, being successful is not doing extraordinary things. Being successful is simply doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. So let's talk about some fairly ordinary things. See if we can't find an extraordinary way to put it into action. Four steps to achieve good communications. Number one, have something good to say. Right? That's obvious. Success is a study of the obvious, a refined study. So to achieve good communications, first of all, you've got to have something. In computer language, it's very simple. Nothing in, nothing out. You cannot speak that which you do not. No, you can't share what you don't feel, and you can't translate what you don't have, and you can't give what you don't possess. So first of all, to give it, to share it, for it to be effective, you got to have it. So good communications, first of all, starts with preparation. Key word, preparation is simply getting ready. And a big share of our life is simply getting ready, getting ready. That first five years is to get ready, to start our formal education. The next eight years. Eight years is a chunk of time, right? But after eight years now, you're ready for high school. That's a long time. Five years and then eight more years. That's a long time to get ready. So now we go through four years of high school. And all those four laborious years are to get ready for college. Now another two, three, four, five, six years. Six more years to get ready, right? To be gainfully employed and earn a living and get out there in the marketplace and see what we can do. A lot of life is just simply getting ready, preparation. Now to get ready for good communications, you got to spend part of your year, part of your day, getting ready for the next day, part of the week getting ready for the next week. It's so easy to be casual about not continually preparing for the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year. Getting ready. And this is one of the most important areas to get ready in. Good communication. Key word, research continual research. It's easy to hope that the skills that you learned in the 70s will last through the 80s, or the information you gather during the 70s will be sufficient for the 80s, but not so. We've got to continually learn, continually grow. So key word, research, preparation, getting ready. Preparation is like building an account from which to draw. When you get ready to talk, you want to make sure you've got a verbal check that'll cash. Here's the power in good communication. When what you say is only the tip of the iceberg of all you know, that's when communications becomes powerful. When what you say is only a portion of all that you know because you've gotten ready for this moment, this time, this occasion. I'm sure we've all been around some people who very quickly told us more than they knew. <laughs> Didn't take them but a short period of time to run out of illustrations, to exhaust all their stories. Probably meaning great lack of preparation, great lack of deliberately getting ready. Now, it is possible in some respects to prepare for life just by accident. You know, life does teach us some things by accident. There are some things you can learn by just careening from wall to wall and stumbling from day to day and staggering from week to week. I mean, you can learn some things that way. But the other 99% of what you need to know has got to be on purpose. Preparation on purpose. 
good phrase. Am I engaged in preparation on purpose to get me ready to do in communication the skills that are necessary to take me where I want to go? Good question. That's what we're here for, to ask some of the tough questions. When I met Mr. Shope, he asked me the tough question. I'm 25 years old. He said, Mr. Stone, you've been working six years. I started working when I was 19. Mr. Shope asked me a simple question. He said, Mr. Stone, how are you doing? I said, not very well. Mr. Shope said, I suggest you not do that anymore. <laughs> wow, tough questions. Mr. Show said, Mr. Rohn, how much money have you invested in the last six years? I said, what do you suppose, roughly? Not any. Shove said, who sold you on that plan? <laughs> wow, tough questions, tough questions. And it's so important for somebody to come along and ask us the tough questions and not let us get by with small numbers and small answers. So that's what I'd like to do, ask some of the tough questions. Let me give you now some key words that'll help us to prepare for good communication. Key word. Number one, interest. To prepare for good communication, take a new interest in life. Here's a good pledge to make at the beginning of the day. I'm going to be more interested in this day. I'm going to see if I can get more from the day. Boy, it's easy if you're not careful to just try to get through the day. But sophisticated people learn to get from the day. They don't want a day to go by without gathering up some new ideas, some new impressions, new color, new nuances, new sense of worth and value. They gather from the day. Interest. And here's two of the major subjects to study with interest. Life and people. Develop a new, sharper interest, new, sharper focus on life and people what's happening, what's going on. Now, that new commitment to a new interest for the day will get you ready for the years to come with better communication. Because to say it well, you have to feel it well. To say it well, you have to know it. And to know it, you just got to go through the laborious process of gathering, extracting the information. So that's the first word, interest. Here's the second word, fascination. A bit beyond just simple interest. Interested people are probably satisfied that it ticks. It ticks. And that's good to know. It ticks. But fascinated people want to know what? What makes it tick? Fascinated people aren't satisfied usually with surface information. They've got to know more than just what appears. What's really going on? The hippies had a pretty good question in the 60s. What was it? The hippies. Good question they had. What's happening? That's a good question. What's happening? And sophisticated hippies say, what's really happening, right? What is really going on? What's making things tick? What's making things happen? Why do people feel like they do and think like they think? What is the difference between success and failure? Who has the appetite and who doesn't have the appetite? This whole fascination about life and people and circumstances and society and money and banks and churches and sermons and books and records and life experiences and enterprise and nations and color and races and religion and a whole fascination for this wide panorama of life and life experiences. I'm telling you, if you'll take a new fascinated look at life and what's going on, it will now show up in color and sharpness in your future communications. It'll have a new reach and a new depth. It'll have a new insight, a new excitement. Now, I've got a good experiment for you to try. The next time you're tempted to be frustrated, see if you can turn it into fascination. How to turn frustration into fascination. That's a good skill to try to learn. I'm sitting on the freeway in Los Angeles. My airplane leaves in 45 minutes. The traffic is not moving an inch. I am now fascinated. <laughs> I'm telling you. Now, it doesn't work every time. <laughs> I'm willing to admit that. Nothing works every time. But can you imagine the extra value you'll get from a frustrating experience if you just think about this? Can I turn this frustrating experience into something fascinating? I'll learn a lot more from it if I'm fascinated by it than just frustrated by it. So just try that little key. Try to turn frustration into fascination. And in a frustrating experience, if a smile comes across your face, other people will wonder, you know, what's going on? But it'll just be private between you and me. The man taught me how to be fascinated, if possible, in a frustrating situation. Okay, turning frustration into fascination. The extra learning discipline, the extra learning skill. And I think this is part of it. Here's the next key word. This is a big one. Sensitivity. To really communicate well and to touch people in a wide range and from a wide range of experience, you've just got to have felt the experience. It's got to be part of you. Sensitivity training. Being touched by a wide range of human experience perhaps even beyond your own. Incredible words said about the master teacher, Jesus. It said he was moved. Wow, that's a key word. It said he was moved with compassion. What was happening moved him, touched him. Another phrase said he was touched, he was moved, he was affected. On more than one occasion, he cried. So part of that human drama of experience, I think, for us to really be able to reach people and touch people with words and ideas and emotion and phrases and sentences loaded with feelings. We've got to go into this area of sensitivity, being touched, being affected by our own lives as well as the lives of other people. Sensitivity. Being touched, being moved, this is part of the heavyweight stuff that 
starts to show up now in our language and in our communication.